Hi everyone, welcome to episode 2 of How I Fell in Love in the Plane. Didn't think my sentimental life would be so interesting to you. Let's go. After her shuttle left for the Eiffel Tower, I took a cab back home. Traffic was dense in Paris that day, so it gave me time to think. What if I never see her again? What could I have done more? What a shame, she's only staying for a night. Oh. I would have loved to make her visit all the cool places I know in Paris. Invite her to the best restaurants and stroll along the Seine, getting to know her. What are her passions in life? Her dreams? How was growing up in Korea different from growing up in France? So many things we could have shared. If only I had more time. I think it was that element of urgency that gave me the adrenaline or the envy to make something more happen. At about 9.30 p.m., I came back home and just had time to unpack some souvenirs I bought in Seoul when I received a text. Uh, it was her. Uh, I just arrived. <laughs> Enjoy. It's so romantic. Are you gonna go to the top? No, the last shuttle bus to the airport is 10 p.m. Uh, I'm afraid I will not have enough time. <sighs> this, again, was God sending me a message. I had to try something. You should really climb to the top for the view. If it's the only time you're gonna see this tower in your life, you can't live with any regret. As I told you, you can stay at my place tonight if you want. But are you sure it doesn't bother you? How can I pay back? Don't worry, it's a pleasure for me to- Hey son, you bucked my baby boy! So tell me, how was Korea? I haven't seen you in 10 days. <laughs> I missed you so much. Was the food great? You like the people? Did you buy me some kimchi? Mm. I don't have time, Mom. Huh? I'm on a very important mission right now. Oh, my son doesn't love me! <laughs> mm. <sighs> don't worry, it's a pleasure for me to help you. Take your time and just tell me when you're almost finished. I will come to pick you up at the Champ de Mars. So around midnight, we arrived at my place and my parents were already sleeping. I showed her my brother's room where she'd sleep and then she went to my room so we could spend some time together. We talked non-stop for two and a half hours. She told me she was 24 and worked as a flight attendant at a local Korean plane company. She's been planning this trip to Europe for a long time and was happy to be able to experience more of Paris than just the airport. We watched some funny videos on YouTube. I shared with her some ideas I was working on and showed her the various items I bought in Korea. <laughs> oh, why did you buy the rumors? Huh? The ru what? The rumors. It's Japanese dolls. It's not Korean. Uh, I don't know. I found them weird, so I bought them. <laughs> Strange. Uh -huh. At that moment, as much as I wanted to take my chances, I just couldn't. Listen, call me what you want, but the risk reward was just too low. There were clearly some tension, but it was way too soon. Let's say, for example, I tried to touch her hand, or worse, tried to kiss her and she said no. If she was from here, she'd just go back to her home and end of story. But because she was from Korea, she would have had nowhere to go but the airport. It would have ruined her entire French experience and 15 hours of me trying to make her like my person. Everything we had at that moment was so pure and precious to me. I couldn't take the risk to destroy everything by making a bold move. Uh, well, if you have your plane at 7 a.m., it means you gotta leave my place before 5. So I think we should try to grab two hours of sleep. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> I think I got a better idea. Uh. 